Well, hello, YouTubers, and welcome back. I haven't been able to do very much. With the shifts have been working, but I've been able to do a little bit. So what I did was I went to the petrol station and I got some uh, ordinary petrol and um, came home, I poured it in the can, and I just left it to soak for several days. And I tipped it out and I rinsed it a couple of times and the petrol has done the trick, it's nice and clean inside. Um, also, uh, what I ordered has arrived. These are the caps that we were using. Uh, these are 68 UF, 450 volts, 105 degrees. But well, they should be more than enough to cope with this. Um, I'm trying to see what make of caps they are. Um, elite. I don't know if they're any good or not. They're not Panasonic's or anything like that. I suppose they do the job nicely. But also I ordered the rest of the colours. I've got green, red and black in this size wire. So um, I ordered um, 20 metres of the rest of the colour range that they do. This is stranded wire and it is um, 1 kilovolt at 1.4 amps. And I've stuck a label on each one of them so that I know what they are. So this is all for all the, the smaller wires like these. You know, I've got um, brown, grey, uh, what's that one? I always get the two, oh, that's purple, blue, orange, um, yellow, pink, and white, which is more like um, a very light grey than a white. But... That gives us plenty of different colour wire options because the company that I buy most of my stuff from is going to go on holiday from today for two weeks. So I'll not be able to order any of them for that amount of time. But we've got plenty to be going on with. Uh, it's, I, want to, I want to make a, a statement here. It seems an awful shame that this is the radio we're going to use um, to take parts off to repair my father's radio. Uh, if any of you are wondering, if you're going to do that, Richard, why are you taking the time to um, restore this one and get this one working? Well, it's all about practice. You know, um, the more radios that I work on, the better it is for me. It's a radio, and we can get it working, and with a bit of luck, in the future, we might be able to get a new glass or um, the parts that we need. You never know. I never ever back myself into a corner. I always leave my options open. Now I know that most of the valves in this are pretty tired, apart from the new replacements. Um, even if I go down that road and replace all of the valves in this, we've got a set of valves that will fit the other radio. You know, it's a good advantage of having two radios exactly the same uh, because you can, for me personally, you can compare the two and you can compare um, and learn from them, which is the whole idea. So, I won't be very much done today. Um, I'll just let you know about this. Also, um, I've been bidding on some more radios, believe it or not. If I haven't got enough that I haven't worked on yet, I've got a pile in the front room as it is now. Um, one came today. Um, it's up another Bakelite case job this one's got a broken case too but this was this was purchased knowing that it had a broken case and it's arrived obviously with the same problem it's not been delivered like that now, I've got a long weekend off coming up soon so that's when I'm hoping to be able to um, do quite a lot to this and also I want to clear my bench off and set up the isolation transformer and then decide on what I want to do. See how we go, all right? See how we go. I'll shoot the rest later. This has been shot on the 14th of the 6th, 2017. See you later. Hello there. This is um, just a, a little look. I was planning for what I'm going to do the next time I come to the table with the um, soldering iron. I thought, let's have a look to see how these uh, new caps are going to fit inside our can. 
Well, I don't think it takes too much imagination to work out that even if I was to put the two caps back to back, there is no way they're going to fit inside that, is it? <laughs> they're a bit big. We wanted um, two 50 UF at 350 volts and the nearest capacitor I could get was 68 UF at 450 volts. Well, these are more than capable enough of replacing this. But the plan to get these inside there? Uh-oh, it ain't gonna happen. So, we went for all that for nothing. Well, at least we know what's inside these tin cans. I suppose we learnt something there. And we also we learnt um, what we can use to remove the, uh, the black tar. But, so, it looks like we're going to end up gluing this back together with nothing inside it and connecting these up on a terminal block underneath which is what Doug said in the first place that's what he said he normally did he doesn't normally restuff caps I just wanted to do it so that I could say I've done it but as you can see they ain't gonna fit <laughs> So, um, either we are going to have to come up with a different caps or we're going to have to use these and, um, well, I think you can see where this is leading, can't you? Shame, isn't it? <laughs> All that effort for nothing. Never mind. I suppose we learnt a little bit. We know that they won't go in that tin can, so if we replace them on the other radio, we'll know that we need a terminal strip underneath. Okie dokie. Um, I have removed the glass, as I said I would, because I knew that I was going to break it. And I've removed the um, the rubber that goes on there that um, stops the light from from getting into anywhere near where this uh, phosphorus um, part of the valve is. Um, now, just to give you a little bit of a note, um, I don't want to waffle on too long and make this too big a video without anything really happening, because tomorrow we're going to be doing a lot to this radio, I hope. Um, I've been bidding on eBay, and I have come up with some more radios. Um, I've got, a, a, I think, five coming now. Um, one's already here. I think there's another four on the way. And I'm bidding on a fifth one. Now the fifth one, the case is really, really nice. The chassis inside, well, <laughs> there's not a lot left, if you know what I mean. Transformers and um, IF cans is about, and tuner and stuff like that, yes. Valves, uh, rust everywhere, corrosion. I think you get the general idea. So we'll come back to this tomorrow. I think what we'll end up doing is gluing all this back together, tidying up this. Um, you know, maybe maybe I'll have a, a bit more of a think about it um, tonight. Um, you know, nothing set in concrete yet until we actually go ahead. Okay, see you later. By the way, this is. Um, Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. Today is the um, 14th of the 6th. See you later. What I've decided to do is to drill out the bottom. As it's useless anyway. Maybe we can um, sort things out that way. By the way, I want to introduce you to a new tour board. Um, yes, I've already got one, but I like this one better. It seems to be a lot more refined. It's not the charging problem is why I bought this. I bought, I needed another one. I should have bought this in the first place. It would have done both jobs. But I needed a hammer drill. Because I've got things to put up that I need to get into the walls. And the other one's not a hammer drill. And um, 
that's why I bought this to get the hammer action. I should have bought this in the first place and I would have only had to buy one tool instead of now I've got two of the same. So that's the plan. Um, I've just um, put the bigger drill bit in to drill the biggest hole that you see there. And now I'm using these to chew up the full mica insulator that's in the bottom. So all we'll end up with is a steel ring with a hole in it. That's the plan. Right, what we did was you put a, a sand in um, attachment on the end of the Royby, not the Dremel. I've got better control over the speed on this. Much better control. Not knocking the Dremel, mind. It is worth its weight in gold. Never ever do that. Anyway, what I've done is I've now hollowed out the centre. So the plan is, is the first plan is, remember we're making this up as we go along. Remember these will all be properly insulated and stuff. So that one goes in there. Um, then the next question is, will that one fit through there maybe? Something like that. With the wires attaching it together and fix it in with some um, with some epoxy maybe. Something like that maybe. Um, I'm just turning this round to get the best fit. That's what we're thinking so far. Um, so um, we would um, attach the two negatives together um, and then use the um, shrink wrap and then these two pins will be our red and yellow for the um, 50 UF only this is 68 UF I think that's a, um, a pretty good plan and it doesn't matter how much further if this if this sticks out a little bit more than this it won't matter it won't matter at all and then we make the use of the space of this can hmm that's my that's my thinking anyway right um while i'm not in the mood to be doing any soldering or anything i thought i would um go through my father's collection of bolts in here there's brass and steel bolts now these are the ones that i've tried to start with and none of them seem to fit as i don't have any idea what the thread is or the size and I think we've come up with something that might do it now I think this um, is already knackered but if you look can you see that on that side it's not very good in this picture but there's um, a nut holding on a threaded piece and inside the threaded piece is a hole which I think fits this, so let's give it a try. Let's see if we can make that fit now. If it's too long, we can cut it down. At this stage, you just want to know if we can get it to get it if it goes in. I think the um, the mica disc or plates or whatever you want to call them in there, I think they're already knackered, but we don't know that, do we? Well, so far, it seems to be working. Well, you know, it's difficult to get a light. I mean, I've got the radio on my lap at the moment. Not the best way of doing it. But... Right, well, it seems to be working. It's doing up, which is better than what we had. I think we'll try that. Can you see that? That's closed up. It's not done up tight yet, so we can have a go at tweaking that when we get power on next time. But that's certainly looking promising. But like I say, I think we're going to have to try and source another one of these. And uh, next thing is what I've decided to do is we're going to put these caps back to back like this. And then see how I bent them wires over. 
I'm going to connect them up down the sides and then put heat shrink tubing on. I think that will fit together much better like that. Run the wires down, attach the two negatives together, tidy up the wires and then attach our negative wire to the chassis and then we've got our um, two red and yellow positives um, for our caps. The only thing is obviously one end is going to be sticking out a little bit but I think it will work. Oops, I'm not looking at that. Sorry, I've just realised the camera's looking down at something else. So that's what we'll end up doing, sticking it together like that. And I think the two negatives, which is the short lead, join them up and then continue them down. And then I'll have three wires. I'll make the black my negative and I've got yellow and I've got red. So that will be the two, you know, and then we just just link them up. Sounds like a plan. Well, hello again. Um, I've just switched the camera on. Um, I'm just about to make a start on the next parts of this radio before I get um, uh, Suki ready for the uh, vets because she's going to get her claws trimmed today. It's getting a bit long. Um, I was just... Um, doing something a few moments ago without going into details and I thought I wonder I wonder have I ever looked in there you know so I had a look and you never guess what I found these parts are the parts that would have come from my father's radio and here's the bracket that holds the uh, volume control look familiar no screws of course um, one foot so we're a foot short so um, you know maybe that might turn up I don't know volume controls and tone and controls or whatever it is no tune it tuning and volume that's it that's what those two are these are the actual knobs and this was the volume control of course, there's nothing on it to say what value it is. But we don't need to worry about that, do we? We've got a schematic somewhere. Well, we've got a schematic because you've seen it. So I just wanted to share this um, uh, moment of nostalgia, as it were. And that is the exact same volume control. Um, of course, I don't have any nuts or lock washers or bolts or screws or nothing at the moment. Maybe they might turn up, I don't know. I was also hoping maybe um, these rubbers might have turned up. You know, might have been in the same place. And I suppose wishful thinking. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. Now, the plan is, if I haven't already mentioned it to you earlier, is I'm going to get these two capacitors and I'm going to glue them together back to back the same way around like this and then I'm going to join the wires up and I'm going to use um, heat shrink tubing on the wires themselves and then I'm going to use heat shrink tubing over the whole lot um, so that I've got basically a unit all together like a plug of some kind which will fit inside that tin can what's left of it there we are so basically it will fit something like that that'll go in there like that and that'll go in there like that might be a bit slightly a bit further apart um no it won't be together that's right yeah and then we will probably put some hot glue down either side a blob to hold it I'm not going to go mad because I want this to be that if someone else comes along and needs to work on this that they're going to be able to get it out I don't want to make it so secure that um, it makes that impossible and then this will fit on the outside like that and again 
we can glue this on because the caps can slide in and out but again we'll put a blob of glue on each four corners as it were and um, if anybody needs to break it apart it won't be too difficult but it'll be secure enough now the other thing I've also thought about it might not make any difference it's just my way my forward forward thinking if you can imagine this as the actual tin can with the uh, capacitor that's supposed to be in it and this aluminium part would be connected to this ring that I'm holding in my hand which is connected to chassis which is negative ground all this would act as a screening for the capacitor for um, any kind of noise don't know if that's going to be a problem it's just something I was thinking of I always think ahead on these things and when we glue this to that effectively the aluminium case part is going to be isolated from the ring so there won't be a connection now of course you can't um, solder to aluminium um, well you can under very special conditions you need special equipment um, to solder aluminium uh, because it oxidizes so quickly almost as soon as you've um, cleaned the surface it's oxidized uh, and you can't solder to a surface like that um, so that's my plan we're going to take a chance that we don't have any problems with screening it's probably nothing to worry about it's probably not going to make any difference but it's something to think about isn't it and then this will be able to slide in and out of here and uh, whatever now you now you're going to turn around and say well hang on a minute you said you was going to put a blob of hot glue down the other side yes I did but if you was to put a heat gun on the outside of it you would melt the hot glue and you should be able to pull the capacitor straight out because hot glue will be the equivalent the modern modern day equivalent to tar which they used quite a lot in the old days yeah like that way of thinking I do so um, I just thought I'd share that with you so what I'm thinking of doing I mean I know this volume control is knackered um, it's very very noisy and um, scratchy when you turn the um, when you turn this shaft very very scratchy and I think if I remember rightly the resistor to this which is awesome because I can show you on this radio that resistor which it looks like it could be a 1k I don't know hang on a minute no we're looking at the wrong thing it's this it's up here it's that resistor um, that resistor on the other radio was out of tolerance and I think it was letting too much current through and that's what was um, messing around with the uh, tracks okay enough waffling on let's get on with it right so that's our 268 UF at 450 volt um, Nitrolifix glued together with epoxy and the two negatives are glued together then all we've got to do now is to make a wire from here to here and then extend this wire so that we can hook it up to chassis ground negative to the chassis because remember the chassis is negative well you've got to be careful with um, with these sort of things if I was to ground myself to somewhere else like a radiator or something then the negative side of this chassis will then try to travel through me remember um, electricity takes the shortest path possible to the positive that's very important so you must always keep yourself insulated um, you don't want to be standing on anything wet or if you've just had a bath or something like that, you don't want to be working on radios or switching chassis on. Um, you know, very dangerous. So what we're doing is, um, we're just going to wait for this to set. And I'm just making sure that um, it's not going to stick to the cardboard. 
So when it's at its jelly stage, when I know it's not going to move, um, we'll clean up what we can. Right, this has now got to the jelly stage. Now, once we've wired up these wires, how we want them, which I'll show you, we need to make an insulating cap to glue on here because these two points are going to be pressed up against the inside of the can which would be a dead short if these two were to touch at some point so I'm going to make um, something to go over this to insulate it from the can from the old can as it were from this because there is something sticking up in the bottom of that and that is going to cause us trouble so that's what we're going to do I'm going to, whoops, <coughs> I'm going to glue something on there because at the end of the day we don't want anything to short there okay yes a plan isn't it Right, I've cleaned the, uh, <laughs> I cleaned the wrong one. Good job I checked. I was actually cleaning the positive. All right, so what we'll do is we'll get our alcohol, rubbing alcohol, do this again. I've already cleaned the brush. And just basically just clean off any grease that's on that um, terminal. That's what we've done. We're heating up our 18 watt iron. Um, you're going to need a little bit of flux on there. I obviously can't do this while I'm um, at the moment. I don't know where I put my um, other jig for um, two seconds. Right, and we've uh, got our flux open. We've gone on to the, uh, the leaded solder. This is what was on before. Lead free. I'm not using that for mains radios. No way. So we've soldered this on. And then it's a matter of um, getting the um, heat shrinking tubing on. Right, I've managed to get it stable, so if we now attack it with the solder. Right, and there's our um, solder completed. We just rub some alcohol on there to get rid of any flux. And I'm going to get the grinder out and just grind down these sharp edges. And there we go, we have our heat shrinking on, our attachment to here, and we are, oops, just dropped it on the floor, <laughs> I just dropped it on the floor, oh. <coughs> I can't see what the camera's looking at now, sorry about that everybody, and we are attached to, where are we, there we go, we are attached to the bottom pin. So all we've got to do now is attach a wire to one side of one cap, other side of the other cap, a yellow and a red. And we're quite a long way on. Right, I'm going to have to knock off now because it's time to take um, Suki to the vets and get her claws clipped. So she can't stick them in me anymore because they're getting a bit sharp. So I'll carry on with this when I get back. I've turned my iron off, um, and then we'll carry on with this when we get back. Right, now we have our longer wire. Now the shorter wire, the one that joins the two caps together, is a 1000 volt, 1.4 amp wire. And the wire that comes off the pin which it's connected to, which is on the negative side of the two capacitors, is 1000 volt, 6 amp. So that should be plenty thick enough to carry um, enough grounding for the two caps. That's the plan. Now all we've got to do now is join up the wires for the red and the yellow, I think it was, um, to the wires. That's the next bit. Okie dokie. 
and we'll be using um, 1.4 amp wire. Right, we have our black wire, which is our ground to negative, which is connected um, together both cans. We have our yellow wire, which is fairly short. We probably don't need it like that anyway, because the other wire might even reach. And then we have a long wire. Now this one, the wire is very short. So I might have to run this wire right the way through the chassis. So I put a really long piece of wire on in a bit. So that's basically it. Um, I've decided this rivet in the end, which holds on um, that dimple thing in the other end, if I can get this out to show you. Oh, where are we? In there, can you see that? I'm going to drill that out so that it is flat. Because when the radio is playing and you've got the speaker um, turned up and the whole thing's vibrating, that could work, it's start cutting through. So I'm going to drill that out so there'll just be a tiny little hole in the top. A small price to pay, really, isn't it? I'll put a small hole in first and then a bigger drill and then so on until we get the get it drilled out then I think that's done then all we've got to do is wire this in I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue I'm not going to go mad I don't like using hot glue on old mains radios but it's our modern equivalent of tar which we can't get access to it's just a whole disc capacitor in the middle a blob either side or something it's all you need you know it's not going to go absolutely barmy with this so that's, I mean, this is the hardest part of the capacitors, is this tin can. It's the hardest one to do because it, because obviously you've got to work things as you go along. And there's a little bit that's come out. <clears throat> now we've got a nice smooth surface on the inside. Right, we have uh, a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of this to act as um, insulation, uh, which is now going to go into the can, like so. Whoops! You always need six pairs of hand with this game when you haven't got tripods handy. And then the idea is we're going to, it's just enough to hold it, that's all it is. We're not going to go mad here. I'm going to need two pairs of hands for this, hang on. Right, it's just enough hot glue to hold that in place to stop it waggling around. Now all I've got to do is just cut away a little bit on the edge so that the lid of the um, original can can now be glued on and then we'll be laughing. Right, we have our tin can glued back together. The only thing that's worrying me which we can't tell is is it anchored down straight or are we going to have a cook eyed looking tin well <laughs> well it's um, trial and error at this stage as I say I've never stuffed one before so if there is a mistake then we will learn by our mistake but um, we're just doing our best here so we'll wait for this to harden um, I've turned the um, hot snot gun, as it's called, off and um, hopefully this will be suitable for what we want um, if we need to get it apart <laughs> well, let's hope we don't need to get it apart otherwise we'll be reverting to plan B ok, um, that seems to be a good start should be able to get all that back in nicely. Right, I'm going to post this. And um, next time we'll be installing this um, into the chassis and replacing those two paper caps. And then we'll be having a closer 
look at the schematic. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. And um, please subscribe. Um, leave a comment, whatever. And uh, wish you all the best. Take care.